Big Ben and Fish and Chip, pretty British. The Double Decker Bus, pretty British. But we got some good stuff coming up. We're gonna go to the actual markets. We're gonna go see the Tower Bridge. We're also gonna go do something that's super British. Go to a play. <laughs> Welcome into this week's video, everybody. You saw the title, you know where we're at. We are in London. Was not originally part of the plan, but it just kind of worked out, and now we're here. I'm gonna be honest with you. I do not know all the tips, tricks, secrets, and whatnot, so if you're looking for all the secrets on how to have the best trip in London, it's not that video for you. But what I am gonna try to do is find the most unique and authentic British experience that we can in our few days here. But I'm not gonna spend money to do it. We're running out of cash. So this is gonna be an exercise on how to find the most authentic British experience in London on a budget. We'll see what we can find. And the first stop here is the hostel. All the places in Hostel World looked like they had three tiered bunks and super stuffy. They all had bad reviews and they were super hot. And then I found this place, the Palmer's Lodge, which kind of is this old looking, you know, super British place on the inside. It's got all this wood, this little mite figure, and so it's super British. It's kind of fun to stay in. But it has double bunks instead of triple bunks. It's not too bad. The views are pretty good. And it's on the cheaper side, so it's hostels. There's still a way to go. You can do them even in London. Things get a little pricey, but you can do this for around 30 a night, which is actually pretty cheap for London, which I have found. If you're looking for places to stay, check Palmer's Lodge. Not sponsored, just throwing it out there because it's kind of a fun place. And there's cool people here. But anyways, we're gonna go and see what else we can explore today, do all the kind of touristy stuff and see how that sacks up to some of the other stuff I've found. Let's get into it, huh? I mean, we're starting off pretty strong, guys. London Underground, iconic, key part of any visit to London. Riding on the metro, you'll tap your card on, tap it off. You can use your actual credit card. You don't have to get the Oyster card, their city card. You can, though. It's iconic. The London Tube, the Underground Man, big part of visiting. We're gonna jump to the next spot. All right, I don't know if you guys remember my friends from Belgium, the Beckett List. So they're from the UK and they gave me some tips on London. They said go to Waterloo Station and then just walk towards the London Eye and you'll see all the super iconic touristy spots, Big Ben, stuff like that. So we came down here, we're just wandering around. It's a nice little walk. On that, I was kind of thinking of my reviews for you for the tube. It is super iconic London experience, but honestly, it's not that great. <laughs> The train cars, probably some of the best train cars that I've been on for a metro, but it's super deafeningly loud. Like, even with my noise canceling headphones on, it's super loud. It's still fun and iconic experience. Now we're here wandering around, and we got some fish and chips here. We're gonna eat that in front of Big Ben. It was a little expensive, so it's not the most cheap thing. I mean, we went to this super touristy spot right here on the river, so it's about 13 pounds, 17 bucks for this. And to be honest, the fact that it's $17 for this, kind of just, I'm just gonna say it adds to the, you know, UK London experience. Overpriced, uh, that's kind of what I heard before I came to London. So yeah, it's just even more authentic, right? It's funny because in my mind, fish and chips is very Australian, very Aussie, but it's only Aussie because it's so British. Kind of funny there. But yeah, so I figured this would be a good cultural activity. It's not because I like to eat unhealthy, like fish and chips. It's cultural. Let's see how this fish goes. Honestly, it's pretty good for fast food. Fresh fish. Yeah. With some fries. And then there's just a few views in life that you see, and you go, whoa, that, there it is. That was one of these moments for me. I had it with the Apple Tower, had it here. It's just like all of a sudden, like, boom, it hits you. Maybe we're gonna keep moving along the trail and see what we can find, see what other British experiences are waiting for us. Hopefully, more cheap than $17 fish and chips. Then as you cross Westminster Bridge, you get over into the area where there's Big Ben, there's the Parliament Square, all of these touristy destinations that you want to see, that you want to stop at and get that real British feeling. There's statues of Winston Churchill, of Gandhi, there's Westminster Abbey right there that you can go into. I didn't go into because there was a line. And just down the road, there's Trafalgar Square. You can go and hang out on the steps and look at the big spires there. Kind of just hang out and you keep walking down and there's St. James Park. You can wander through, feed some ducks, which leads you to Buckingham Palace. You can stop, take all your photos there. Flowers were absolutely beautiful, just this bright, vibrant red. I was super excited to see that. They were so clean and pristine. And St. James Park connects into this kind of just slew of parks, including Hyde Park that you can go to. Hyde Park's kind of like the park here in London, at least from my research and understanding. It's like the Central Park of New York, but smaller, I've been told. <laughs> and it also gets you over close to kind of Piccadilly, which I don't know much about. A few people have told me to go check out that area of town. We're gonna wander that way, kind of see what we can find, and hopefully have some fun. Oh, 
guys. The iconic telephone booth. Look at this. We're inside. There's a little telephone. I don't know why I'm here. I don't need to call anyone. This is weird. Anyways, we're gonna get back to it. And then made it into a spot in Piccadilly called Fortnum and Mason, and it's like the British store. It's full of all kinds of tea stuff. Like so many different types of teas. There's biscuits for all kinds of different stuff. They talk about how they pair together and which ones are good. There's cheeses. There's a whole downstairs area with a bunch of different wines. It's like it takes that whole aspect of British culture and just blows it up into a super fancy store. I don't drink tea personally, but it's fascinating to come and see everything. You know, maybe buy some biscuits or something, some cookies. Then there's a whole coffee area. Like it's just this huge to-do Fortnum and made some friend told me about it and so I thought come check it out it's in this Piccadilly area that now that I've been through I realize why people told me to come here it's kind of got that classic London look from the olden days all pretty British it fits into our theme today but we can have the most authentic British experience this is definitely up there we'll go see what the rest of the Piccadilly area has got to offer A little out of my price range, but it's fun to wander around to see some of the different views and whatnot, the architecture. It's a cool little area. But as far as experiencing something truly British, I got a little surprise for you guys, maybe. Oh, we're gonna do something fun on the way to dinner. It's so lame. We're getting on one of the buses. All right, the buses were a fun time, but honestly, it was really just public transport. <laughs> it was nothing special, but we were on one of the big double-decker buses. We sat on top, and we took it to a place that you gotta go if you come to London. I was so excited to get here to go to the food places, but I screwed up, guys. I'm so sorry. It closed at 6. It's 6.57. The Camden Markets is where I was trying to come to. It's in this place called Camden Lock. Cool, hip area. There's all kinds of cool, funky stores. They all got unique stuff on top of them to kind of advertise and make their store sign special. Which is a lot of stuff going on. It's kind of like the hip area and I was surprised that it closed at 6 to be honest I'm a little disappointed, but it makes sense. It's going all day from 11 to 6 according to Google Maybe we'll make it back here tomorrow. So that's gonna be our day one here in London Get some good British stuff real quick got some British experiences in there. We can do a little bit better We'll take you into tomorrow and continue this quest having the most authentic British experience while on a budget Let's See what we can find. All right, we're gonna time warp again one two three Okay time warped now we're here Second day in London at the London Tower Bridge here. It's one of the biggest sites in London next to Big Ben. Might even be number one. The street goes over the bridge, but the bridge does lift up and allow boats to pass through on the Thames River. It was built in the 1880s and 90s. You know, super old and iconic. It's got all the Gothic architecture and it's fun to see. Fun to walk across. You immediately recognize it, right? You see it in all the movies and whatnot. And it's right next to the Tower of London as well. And the Tower of London is kind of, from what I gathered, an old like prison and kind of like a castle or stronghold. It says it regards the crown jewels of England. And it's kind of like a museum now you can wander through. It was like $30, so sticking to the budget on this trip. And it's free to walk across the bridge. So, you know, have to put that on the list. So there's a bunch of bridges right here that cross the sand, but these bridges are all famous for different reasons. The London Bridge, which everyone sings about. And then there's the Millennium Bridge, which I guess is a big thing for Harry Potter fans. And so obviously, I don't know about it because I'm a little uncultured. You can boo me in the comments, it's all right. So that is the Tower Bridge. We're gonna keep moving on. All right, that Millennium Bridge I told you about made it over here. You can see the Tower Bridge off in the distance. This was built in 2000, it was opened. And it actually closed for two years after like two days of being opened because it was so like wobbly. They took two years to fix it and build it even more and then it reopened. Becoming an iconic staple of London because one, of Harry Potter, but two, it's just kind of modern and a new attraction. And it's a footpath only so you can walk across. It's easy, there's no cars, there's not a lot of traffic. So it's a nice little spot and it's nice and windy so if it's a hot summer day you can come get some relief from the heat. Even though it's cloudy skies today, it still does feel nice to get that wind on you. As you can see, did quite a bit of walking, so I'm a little hungry. So yesterday we were gonna go to the Camden Markets and we missed it, right? You remember that? There's a place very similar to that, but it's closer to here, called the Burroughs Market that I've heard about. So we're gonna go check that out and see what kind of food we can find. Made it here to the Burroughs Markets. Found myself a little currant lemonade. Zingy, it's good. So they have all kinds of food here, ranging from cured meats and cheeses and bread if you want to make your own little charcuterie board. It's on empanada stand. There's 
a lot of restaurants as well. That kind of seems to be the more popular option. Restaurants along, and then you can get some like grocery type stuff here. But there is a lot of fresh food you can't get. There's a huge line at the fresh seafood so you can get some mussels there. It's kind of a crowd favorite. I've seen it mentioned a lot when you look up the borough market. You can get fresh fruits of all kinds. There's fudge, there's candy, there's a donut vendor. There's all kinds of sandwiches and hamburgers, hot dogs, that sort of thing. And then there was a place that was doing pulled pork looking stuff and you can get mac and cheese with it as well. There's a guy that had his own little beer area. You can get all kinds of different beers and wander around the market drinking those. Are allowed to drink here. And so the options are seemingly endless. It's not as big as Mark's Well Annoying in Berlin. If you saw that video, if you don't, I'll put it up in one of these videos at the end. But overall, pretty cool, fun little area just to wander around even if you want to come get some groceries and stuff. But I think I might go wait in line for those muscles. All right, gotta find a spot anywhere you can, right? Sitting here next to this wall. Anyways, I've never had muscles before, so I'm excited to try it. It's been slow baked in this thing forever. It looks super nice. Got some good garlicky flavor in there for sure. Mixed in with the rice. It's got all kinds of spices and whatnot. Some Eastern flair. It's got these shrimp in here as well. This is pretty tasty. It's got little bits of, it almost looks like chicken in here, but I think it might just be torn out muscle. So yeah, it's good. Some spice flavor to it. Not like spicy heat wise. So this might not be like traditionally British, but it's British in the sense that it's kind of the new British where it's super multicultural and it's seafood, right? So it's kind of a mixture of both of them. We'll see where it weighs in at the end of the video. What do you guys think? Is this very British or did I betray you in this video? Let me know. But I think we're gonna continue the food tour and go find some more fun food. All right, I think this takes the cake for the most authentic British experience, getting caught in a huge rainstorm. Took the tube over to Camden Markets and started exploring and it was just pouring rain. There was huge puddles flooding some of the markets and stuff. Not here in the food market, but in some of the stuff on the street, but there's all kinds of options here. Like I can't even remember everything that I've seen. So there's two kind of portions. There's this portion right here that's on kind of like the cobblestone area. And then there's a portion that's on the inside. It's a little more nice, kind of like a food court. It's all kind of fun. It all looks super good. There's all kinds of Asian foods, Indian foods. Everyone's kind of got their little claim to fame. There's vegetarian burgers. There was even a Mexican food stand. There's all kinds of stuff going on. So you can find food for anything you want. So let me know in the comments down below what of these options looked appetizing to you. What would you choose? I'm gonna go for something kind of boring, just only boring because it's what every other YouTuber seems to get when they come here and that is the homemade pasta in the cheese wheel where they have this fresh bowl of cheese and then they throw the hot pasta into the cheese wheel. It melts the cheese and they throw it all in a bowl for you and it looks super good and I really want to try it. That's what I'm going to go with. But let me know what you guys would choose because there's lots of good options. I got really tempted by some of the Asian and Indian foods. Comment down below what your choice would have been. Got the option with the pesto and sun-dried tomatoes just because I figured that would be nice. And then threw in some added chili sauce. Because, you know, why not? Just get a little bit of heat in there. Mm. Just like everyone else has. Super creamy. You taste the cheese. And the pesto, I recommend, because it just has that extra little kick of flavor. So you get that creaminess with the cheese and then an extra zing with the pesto. Just as good as everybody says. continue the task of finding the most British authentic experience, we met up with our local friend here, Elliot. Hey, how you doing, you right? And he said one of the most British things you can do is go to a play, which I knew a little bit about. The theatre. You call it the theatre, really, but yeah. Go so on, what yeah. makes the theatre the most British experience? Well, I mean, it depends what you want to watch. I mean, like, you can watch Le Mis. I mean, that's kind of, that's kind of French, but I guess it's kind of English and British. I guess it's, it's more of a London thing, I suppose. No, yeah, for I mean, it's high class. I think it's like the cream tea. I mean, that's probably the most English thing I can think of, like scones. What you call biscuits, we call scones. But we have them with cream. We're cream and, like, jam and plant butter, but you have them with gravy. So we're going to go check out a play. We're going to the Book of Mormon musical. <laughs> Super excited to go see it. Yeah. Local resident friend. Anything else you want to say? To the internet? Good luck. So yeah, <laughs> enjoy. Awesome dude. We're gonna go in. Alright, checking in here after the musical. You guys are probably thinking, but I thought this was all about being on a budget. And you're right. I lied to you a little bit on that one. It was about 40 pounds to go to see the play. But it was one of those things that you know, like I had to do while I was here. I wanted to see the Book of Mormon play for a long time. As from one from Salt Lake City, it was a very interesting play to see. Definitely a bit irreverent, but also there's some things that are strangely accurate, so it was quite fascinating. With that, I was thinking, wait, there's one more crucial 
British thing that we needed to do. And we already came to Buckingham Palace once, but we didn't see the changing of the guard. And I really wanted to bring that to you guys because it's free and you can come see it. But there was a train strike and a tube strikes today. Was not able to make it here on time and I fly out the next time that it's going on. So unfortunately, I won't be able to document the changing of the guard for you guys, but you can see some of the guards here still posted and take your pictures from far away. And on my way here, one of the horse troops is actually exiting the park. It's kind of fun to see, but I thought this would be a good place to end the video today. So comment down below what you thought was the most authentic British experience. What you would do number one on your list was coming to Hyde Park and seeing Buckingham Palace. Was it walking through the tea shop? Was it getting the fish and chips and looking at Big Ben, London Tower Bridge? Let me know what you think, what you thought was the most authentic British thing in the comments below. I personally would probably go with the fish and chips at Big Ben. That was just one of those iconic like, moments where I talked about earlier where you see it, you're like, whoa, there it is. Wow, pretty good. I enjoyed this video. Hope you guys come to London and have have a blast. There's so much to do here, so much to see. Most of the museums are free, so go and check out those. If you're a big World War II fan like I am, you'll really enjoy the Imperial War Museum. It didn't really fit the theme of the video, so I didn't include much of that in here, but there's tons and tons of museums here. So you can come and check out all kinds of stuff. And if you guys learned anything, or if this was entertaining at all to you, make sure to go click subscribe for me. It would go a long way. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. And it's a little act of kindness that'll brighten my day and hopefully bring value to you in the future with more fun travel videos. And so with this video, I wanted to go ahead and dedicate to Greg and Diane Warnock. Thank you so much for your support and your graduation donation. I really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Britain was once the largest empire in the world, bringing all kinds of stuff and making their nation huge and prosperous and wealthy. I'm not saying go out and do exactly what they did, but they had a vision and they changed the world. You could argue for better or worse, whatever your opinion is, but the fact is they went out and made it their own. If you have a dream, a vision, or you want to help the world somehow, there's a purpose for that. So get out there, make a small step towards it, and go accomplish your dreams. Get out there and go create the world.